Okay, so Dr. Sedegin mentioned a few examples in the final lecture, and one of them was uh, 760 in the Hibbler 9th edition for shear centers. So let's do it together. I'm just going to read this out. The built-up beam is formed by welding together the thin plates of thickness 5 millimeters. Determine the location of the shear center. Oh right there. Um, so we know this distance is going to be E from this web. And I don't know if you can see it, but this uh, this mark in E is midway through this beam. Uh, same with this 300. It's midway through there. Um, so I'm going to kind of start off the question. Um, so first things first. Um, here, I'll fold this over and get a little question will be seen as I'm doing this. Um, let's start with a free body diagram. Just uh, ease, ease into the question. It's not even a free body diagram. I'm just basically copying this out um, very poorly. So this is, this whole thing is going to be 200 millimeters. This whole thing is going to be 400 millimeters. And we know the thicknesses throughout are 5 millimeters. We're really trying to find this O. Where is, where is O? So a good thing to start is, is with the equations we need. And um, the main equation is going to be um, the E, the eccentric uh, distance um, right about here equals something that's that's for certain um, force times depth over P and we know here I'll grab a different color for this you know P is the load load that's given and we know F is what's our depth and we know uh, this F is a force what's key is it's a function of B okay so kind of spooky. Uh, let's just start off with what's simple. So uh, from this this question, this right here, basically saying the web is 300 millimeters. So really, that's just the depth in this equation. So hey, we're, we've got somewhere. We've got this E equals force times 300 millimeters over P. Oh, okay. So we're going to kind of have to figure out uh, what is P or where where is P. So um, you can make an assumption and just say it's going directly over where that O is. It would likely go all the way through, but I don't want to busy up my crummy diagram already. Um, so in the previous finals, we noticed that he drew... Um, shear flow so we might as well draw a shear flow for this as well off to the side so um, you can imagine you just open up this end and there's like a like a trickle of shear coming in at the end and then right across the web you know there's going to be this this massive massive amount of shear and then followed by less and less um, the same is with on this side, so a little bit, followed by a lot in the middle, followed by a little bit. Um, that's, that's a safe, safe thing. And we know that because it's all along the neutral axis, and shear is greatest along the neutral axis, said I questioningly. I don't know if I'm wrong. Please, please let me know. Um, because the exam's on Thursday. So, um, that's out of the way. We got this, but how are we going to get this force as a function of P? 
Well, on the equation sheet, he graciously gave us um, the integral uh, is q uh, of dx. And, and really what he means is force, uh, and let's say x, force of x uh, is the integral of q over dx. So what use is that to us? Well, we can get q from another equation. Oh man, I'm not even in, in Zoom. I'm just as bad as some people who we've spent a lot of time with who sometimes do that. So Q equals um, V over Q uh, times I. So I we is our old friend, the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. And little Q. It's uh, that's not supposed to be a little Q. That's supposed to be a big Q. That is the the centroid above the neutral axis of whatever area we want. So, um, or it can be below, but we're going to do above. So, say for example, it would be this this area, the centroid of of like the, this channel. Um, so it'd be like here. And sometimes it's written as y bar dash. I don't even know if you can really see that. Here, I'll write it in as y bar dash. Um, and that's not even the middle, but you can imagine that's the middle. And then this v is just really p. Um, it's, a, it's like another force. Because remember, um, this force is function of, of p. So um, in this, because it's one of these funky shear flows with this this changing amount and it's a shear center, we know this i is going to be the same because i is uh, the calculated the same everywhere. This is just going to be p, but this q is going to be a uh, variable. Um, I also should have wrote y bar times a or y bar prime times a bar prime is the definition of that. So um, let's let's start off with what we know. We know that uh, we can calculate i, um, and we're going to have to calculate i of this this whole here yeah, this whole object. So we're going to break apart it into one, two, and three. So we'll say i one, i two, i three. Um, so i one plus i two plus i three. So for some of you are like, oh, why is he doing I? This is taking so long. But you know what? Might as well get it right. Take the time. So I, what's I? Well, it's base times height to the power of three over 12 in uh, this axis. And it's only gonna be this because we don't need to deal with the parallel axis theorem. Um, because uh, the centroids on is the same for um, all three of these um, non-pronounular uh, uh, members. So we're going to have, as we know, the thickness is, is 5 throughout. 5 times, what is it, 400, 400 to the 3 over 12, plus I2, which is this one. So that's... Whoa, that's where things get crazy. So the base is not actually 300 because it's right here to right here. So we, and this measurement's in the middle. So we take half and half of each of these. So I'll just write it out. 300 minus, um, uh, 5 divided by 2 times 2 drawn out, but what is times 5, because that's the height, over 12, plus one more, um, this one over here, so it's 5 um, by 200, the power of 3, over 12, and summing that up, 30, times 10 to the 6 really good at mental math. So, 
going forward, what else do we need? Back to this Q equation, we got I, nice. We got V, let's get Q. That's where things get a little messy. So you could do it from either of these. Um, doop. Either the the big one here or the the little one, and I'm just gonna do it on the little one uh, for the lows. Um, so we know this is a hundred, a hundred. So things get a little funky here because, well, from here to here, this is going to be a changing amount. Uh, 